Welcome to the relationship show with uh, Diane Valleycat, your divorce recovery coach. And happy Easter to you. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about what is it like or what it has been like with you and your family on your, fir- uh, your first year of divorce, living through the holidays. Some of you have already lived it and some of you are still living it. Diane, welcome. Hi, thank you, Rebecca. Um, you know what? This is probably one of the hardest things when you go through, um, you know, a separation and a divorce. And what I always, always tell clients is this. Don't pretend that it's not happening. Don't pretend that you're not sad. And don't pretend that you're not, you know, upset. Because there are a bunch of different scenarios, right, in separation and divorce. It could be that you decided to leave. And this is the first Easter, um, Halloween, Christmas, that you're not going to be part of a family. But what you really need to do is that, so if you're the one that's left and you've made that choice, I know when you're getting lonely or the kids have gone to dad's because it's his his turn to have them for Easter and you're sitting there feeling alone and lost and, you know, should I, have, should I have done that? Should I have been, you know, you question everything about your decision. And you know what? Sit there and just be in it. Get a journal and write out what you're feeling. Write out that you're lonely, that it's hard to leave, you know, not to have the kids. And as you're writing, you'll see that the pain is probably coming from the wanting and the illusion of of, of losing this, you know, the, the family as a whole. And and give your time, like give yourself time. Just say, okay, I'm not going to be depressed all weekend, or I'm not going to be depressed you know, all through the holidays. So I'm going to give myself two hours today. I'm going to sit down with my journal and a box of Kleenex. I'm going to grieve. I'm going to write. And I'm going to um, allow myself, like accept the fact that you're grieving. Accept the fact that you're you're lonely right now. Accept the fact that you're going to lose, like you've lost your kids for half of the holidays. And, And give yourself permission. Because what we do is we judge ourselves, right? We judge ourselves because the kids leave and you fall on the couch and you just start bawling your eyes out. And you're like, you know, I shouldn't do this because I'm the one that left and I just couldn't do this anymore. You know what? Turn it into a discovery. Get curious about what are those feelings and are just the feelings of sadness and the feelings of regret that, it, you know, you had to get to this place. So I think, you know, people don't. They try to, you know, plug through and pretend they're okay and not give themselves a time to to really grieve and to be sad because that's okay too, right? And then we have the other scenario where you've been left and so you don't even have a choice in the matter. So he's, you know, he, she's left you and here you are losing your kids for half the time on something that you didn't even choose and that just happened. And oftentimes when you get left like that, There's usually somebody else in the picture, which even hurts triple more, right? And so, again, be angry. Allow yourself when you're, you know, that he's coming to pick up the kids or she's picking up the kids, get pissed. You know, sit in and sit in it and get really upset and get really pissed and then go to your hurt and then hurt and then be sad and then get pissed again. But just be with that. Be with it. Heal, Heal it. Allow yourself to be that. Because if you don't, it will creep up on you when you less expect it, and it will it will knock you down to your knees. So while this is happening, and there's Easter, and then there's summer holidays that you're going to lose them, and they're going to the cottage, you're not going to the cottage, and then there's Christmas, and then there's Halloween, and there's all those things, right? So make sure every, especially in the first year, make sure that every step of, of the loss of your, your children half the time that you actually allow yourself to heal. And healing is being sad, grieving, but not allowing yourself to grieve all day, right? Say, I'm going to give myself two hours. And I'm going to grieve and I'm going to be pissed. And I'm going to journal and I'm going to do all that kind of stuff. And then I need to do something such as organize a house because you got free time and you have no kids, you know, do your laundry, do everything or go outside and have a walk, go to the, go to the, you know, the bush and scream, yell, but do something. And also what I want you to understand, too, is what can you get to a place where you're doing um, your own rituals, your own, you know, memories? How are you going to recreate 
some memories and some family times and some, you know, just a new way of being, right? Because it's going to be all a new way of being. And so as the years go through, go by, you will have your own traditions and you'll have your own things that you, that you're going to do because, you know, you have to recreate it. Um, any Rebecca, I don't know what else, like it's, it's, that's a, it's a hard topic, right? It's a really hard topic because some of us don't have the opportunity to even be able to grieve because sometimes we also end up having the kids a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> and if that's the case, you know, create something with the kids and if the kids are also sad that they're not seeing daddy or they're not seeing mommy because this is where we're at um you know sit down I used to laugh because I mean I used to make my kids have a sad night so we would decide like what sad movie we're going to watch we would get popcorn and I have them both beside me and we would say okay well let's watch a sad movie and then we'd have a crying of the sad movie and then we'd get into conversations like, why is the movie sad for you? How did that, you know, relate back to your life? And how does it make you, you know, why do you feel sad? Because when you watch a movie and it gets you emotionally, it's because it's tied to some kind of wound that you've gone through and it's bringing up those memories, right? So I, and it's really important for the children um, to see you sad and for them to be able to be sad as well, because you know what? Can't show them I'm sad. Can't show them I'm pissed. Can't show them I'm grieving. But no, you, you have to. Because if you're covering up all your feelings, then they learn to just cover up all their feelings. And so the key is actually allowing feelings to come out. Rebecca, do you have a question? Well, I, that's a really good idea about watching the movie. Because I, I, when I was thinking about the this subject matter today and how you're going to address it, I, I my kids were already grown up when I mm -hmm. separated. So it wasn't quite the same thing. They were, they're not even in the same town, but when I was a kid and my parents divorced mm -hmm. as a kid, there was like this awkwardness, right? Mm -hmm. This like yes. pull in between the parents. And then one parent had like a, a girlfriend and you were like mm -hmm. with their kids. And it was like just awkward and uncomfortable mm -hmm. and every, you know, how your family might've celebrated this is mm -hmm. a little bit different from how they celebrated that. So like you're missing yeah. this sort of, sameness and um i don't think we ever had a conversation with the parents you know to help us through that but i honestly thought you were going to talk about you know behaviors or things that would show up with the kids like what because it's not just hard for the spouses that are splitting up there's also if you have children anyway there's yeah. uh, they're living something completely different like their yeah. world has shake been shaken Absolutely. My world was shaken. And, 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 you know, I, I'm a big advocate, right? Because of, <laughs> of, of not bringing in, you know, not bringing them to the new boyfriend and new girlfriend for at least a year. And most people don't listen to me and they don't listen. And the sad part about it is that that's the hardest thing for them. We're children who, let's say, it's a first semester. So let's say you separated, I don't know, three months ago and so there's daddy's house and mommy's house. Daddy has a girlfriend because it's usually faster for daddies who have girlfriends. So daddy has a girlfriend and now they're going, you know, half the time at Easter, let's say to the girlfriend's parents place. And so the kids feel that they're betraying money. Right. So. Too much fun. And we're 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 kind of let's call it accepting of this. Then mommy's sitting home alone. Right. So they don't have a, an empty heart. They don't have the heart to just say, you know, this is great. This is fun. And, you know, look at all my new my life and stuff. They don't see it that way. They see it in, in you know, a kind of a betrayal of money. <clears throat> right. It could be the opposite. It could be a betrayal of daddy as well. And so I don't understand why people um, separating would do that to their children. Right. Is to, to, to really the first time that let's say they take them or there's a vacation or a holiday and, and, and a boyfriend, girlfriend's already been introduced. That's hard. That's really hard. And it's the, actually the hardest on kids. It, I don't think people have any clue. Like, I don't think they think about it. They get, you know, people go, Oh, you know, kids are resilient and sure. We're yeah, all resilient, but there's impact. Yeah, it's like, they don't even, they, it's not even taken into consideration of. No. Like, yeah. you know, the other day I was, we were talking about Easter with some clients and, 
you know, the, the their two boys and and they were going over to dad's place. They've been separated for maybe three months and dad's place is now living with girlfriend and his her two kids. And, you know, the boys were 12 and 14 and they're like, we're not going like we don't want to. And that's a really sad place for these boys because they love dad. Be with dad, but they don't want to be with dad and the girlfriend and her kids. They no just kidding. Right. And and it's really, really sad. Like, you know, backwards to my story is, you know, Tara, my daughter was five and the first time he picks them up. So we lived in Kingston. I moved to Ottawa um, and he picks them up and they bring he brings them directly because he's living now in the apartment with the girlfriend and her daughter. And he picks up my two kids and brings the first time. So they haven't even established what this new family looks like, like me you know, like daddy, me and my sister, they don't establish, you know, daddy's has a different connection and he's there for you guys. And, you know, this is hard, but, you know, this is, you know, we let's recreate special moments between the three of us. No, it's right to girlfriend and then expect, you know, I want you to accept girlfriend. Well, it, it doesn't always work that way. No. <laughs> and that's the hardest things for children. It is the hardest thing. And so to me, you know, my big message is, you know, especially on in the vacations and holidays and all that kind of stuff, give them a year, give them a year to just have the recreate um, holidays with mommy and us and then holidays with daddy and us. You don't have to bring those other people in. Like it, it, it's not necessary. And unfortunately, you know, again, people don't stay single long enough between you know, your separation and, and your separation, because right away we want to plug it in with someone else because we don't want to feel bad. But you know what? Feeling bad is going to come anyways, and it's going to come and get you and it's going to come and bite you because if you don't give yourself that time and, and importantly, most importantly, the time for your children, right? Because if right away your boyfriend, girlfriend comes in and Christmas looks like this now, and there's no place for them to grieve because you're not going grieving, you're not showing anger, you're not showing all of those kind of things. So they think their their feelings are not okay. They think their feelings are not normal, right? Because you're not being that way, but they feel that way. Yeah, and then behaviors happen, and the parents like, yes. you know, I don't understand. You know, my the kids, kids. And, yeah. and that's what exactly you know I was doing a mediation, and I'm you know my kids doing this. I don't know. I don't know why. So my question is always, well, you know, where, how long have you been alone with the children? Oh, like only about five weeks because, you know, my girlfriend moved in and so on. I'm like, that's why. That's, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, that's not why. Yeah, no, it is. Because now one of the kids is rebelling because she does Easter differently. And that's yeah. not what we at our house. Why are we like this right away now? Right? And then they take a fit and they say, I want to go back to mom's. No kidding. Because we don't, you know what I mean? Like we didn't recreate something and then introduce somebody in. Is that we take the, the kids, dump them in this and say, this is how we're going to do it now. Well, I don't know, but your kids are not that resilient. Your yeah, kids. We're totally setting them up for like problems to come. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And, and, and I, again, going back to the feelings, you know, if you have no feelings and you're not showing any of the, the the grieving or the sadness or the anger how do you think these guys these kids are going to be able to talk about it or allow themselves those feelings if you're not allowing those feelings for yourself right and so in 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 a separation divorce you know breakup anything you absolutely need first to show your kids how to grieve and how to be sad but then also how to stop it and say okay let's go do something fun Let's go do something that just me, you, and your brother and sister were going to do, and that's going to be our new tradition. So my, I think my biggest message today is to really honor your feelings, honor that you're sad, honor that you're angry, honor that there's a break, honor everything, and process it. Because if you don't, it's going to come get you. Well, thank you. Welcome. That's a really strong message. I never thought about, you know, taking the time and be angry or just yeah. cry or like, you know, that that's really good information. Yeah. Next week, you know what? I'm going to cover um, how to, I'm going to give a little bit of a tool, how to get yourself out of being triggered.
we're going to, I think I'm going to concentrate on being triggered and get yourself out of being triggered. Like emotionally oh, triggered, oh. you mean? Pardon me? Emotionally triggered? Emotionally, like emotionally? triggered. Emotionally triggered by, let's say, I'm going to call it emotionally triggered by your ex. By your ex. You get yourself out of that, right? Okay, perfect. So uh, have a great uh, Easter Monday and see you next week. Well, we get prepared to be not triggered. (laughs) Thank you.